What's up, Titans fans? It's your boy CD back again with another episode of Titan Up Today. Today's show is episode 10, the 10th show of season two. I'm excited. Cannot wait to bring to you guys NFL Week 2 picks. Me and the guys and my sister have got together, put the picks together. We're going to push them off to you. Some of us did well last week. <clears throat> Some of us not so much. We won't say any names. I'll show you here in a little bit. But no need to delay. Let's get down to it. Okay, so we'll start off with injury report. First off, timing is everything. As soon as I hit the upload button to send you guys yesterday's episode, we got the bad news that A.J. Brown with his knee, who did not participate in practice on Thursday, also had not participated in practice on Friday and is now ruled out for this week's contest against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But to be honest, with the Jacksonville Jaguars' pass defense, the way it has been um, last week against the Colts, I think that we might be able to do just fine without A.J. Brown. It's probably a good week for him to, to get a little bit of rest and rest that knee. Hopefully it's just a one-week thing, and it's not going to linger for the remainder of the season, and we're not going to lose him for a long period of time. For the rest of the injury report, Vic Beasley with his knee was a full participant in practice. Still remains questionable for Sunday's matchup. Jamil Douglas with his hand new injury was a full participant on friday but they're showing him as questionable I'm thinking that he'll be fine for the game malcolm butler with his quad did not participate and actually was downgraded from a limited participant on thursday so this is another one of the situations we already have lost a dory jackson for the season Malcolm Butler, we cannot afford to lose him for any time, but him going backwards late in the practice week is never a good thing, and they're still showing him as questionable. Questionable, definitely better than doubtful, but we'll see if he's able to suit up on Sunday. Outside linebacker Derek Robertson with his knee was a full participant and showing questionable still. Darrington Evans, hamstring, downgraded yesterday, did not participate after a limited participation on Thursday is now out alongside A.J. Brown to be on the sideline. Was looking for the rookie to get some snaps um, in a good game, but it looks like we'll be having to miss him for one more week. Obviously, the Jacksonville Jaguars aren't missing many pieces as the only person is tight end Tyler Davis with his knee. Did not participate again. He hasn't participated in practice all week and will not be playing. All right, so with that injury report, it's obviously some bad news, but there is some good news. The bad news being A.J. Brown being out, also, Malcolm Butler not participating and now questionable, but it doesn't look good for him to even play. They don't show him as doubtful, but we will see moving forward. The good news, a positive side, if we can call it that, Vic Beasley is still questionable. He is not ruled out at this point in time, but it was a full participant yesterday. So it looks as if he will be able to suit up and finally get some play time as a new Tennessee Titan. The really good news about this, we'll call it no news is good news. No news is... Corey Davis is not on the injury report. He was a full participant yesterday. He appears to have that hamstring under wraps for the time being and will be able to get a ton of targets as A.J. Brown will not be on the field. Adam Humphreys will need to step up as well as Khalif Raymond. But we're not here to talk about injuries all day. We're here to talk about some picks. NFL Week 2 picks are coming to you. But before we do that, let's rewind a little bit. Let me show you the standings of where we're standing at this point in time. So after week one of tightening up today's NFL picks, here's the standings you can see. Yours truly is number one atop with 10 wins and six losses. Courtney, my sister, has 10 wins and six losses as well. A-Town just behind us by a game with nine wins, seven losses. Jake, the new addition, eight and eight, just right down the middle, even keel. And bringing up the rear, Lun, bright side, seven wins, nine losses. You got to do better than that. All right, so now you guys see where we stand after week one, but it's now NFL week two. It's time to move on and choose these picks. Brand new list of games. We already had Cincinnati Cleveland. I did win that game, by the way. But we'll update you guys on the overall standings after we're done with week two. Next Saturday, tune in for that. Anyways, right now, the first game up, we got New York Giants traveling to Chicago. Chicago's favored by five and a half points, 41 and a half point over under Chicago is my favorite to win this game 20 to 17 I do want to throw out a little bit of rumor here maybe it's true maybe it's not I'll give you the facts of this Allen Robinson their 
prized wide receiver over there in Chicago. By far the number one target. And you could argue might be the second best player on that team behind Khalil Mack. Is upset with his contract. He wants a contract extension. He feels like he's being disrespected over there. Check out his Instagram if you can. Um, he deleted all his Chicago Bears pictures. The only pictures you see on there is like with family, whatnot, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he does not play for the Jags anymore. But again, I don't want to start any rumors. But just maybe check out his Instagram and see it for yourself. Next game, Atlanta traveling to Dallas. Dallas, four-point favorites after they lost against the Rams last week. Horrible game, I would say. But I think that they redeem themselves against the Atlanta Falcons team that is just all over the place and has not been right since they were winning a game. I forget what week it was. They were winning 28-3. to It's kind of a big game, but ever since that game, they just haven't been right. Anyways, Dallas. 51 and a half points over under. I have Dallas to win this game in a shootout, 34 to 28. The next game up, Detroit travels to Green Bay, my Super Bowl favorite, not to win the Super Bowl, but to get to the Super Bowl. Green Bay is favored by six points, 48 and a half over under. I have Green Bay to win this 30 to 27. Devontae Adams is having a, a ball already. Aaron Rodgers looks to be an MVP form. Keep that in mind. Minnesota's next. They travel to Indianapolis in a game that we need Minnesota to play their hearts out and get the dub. Indianapolis, honestly, is already favored by three points. I don't see why, but they're favored and the over-under is 48 and a half points. I have Minnesota, along with all the other folks here, have Minnesota to win 24 to 20. Next game up, Buffalo at Miami. Miami, I had them to win. I thought they were going to upset New England to start. They did not. New England found a way to win. Cody, I apologize. Congrats on week one. Y'all probably will go 1-15 and 15 for the rest of the season. But anyways, Buffalo is favored by 5.5, 41.5 points over under at this point. I am the only one out of these fools that thinks that Miami is going to find a way. I think Fitzmagic Maybe does something. Maybe he doesn't. The defense does well. I like the head coach over there. I think that they win this game in a close one. 17-16. I think it's going to be a sloppy game. Just, just expect a lot of Josh Allen stuff for him to fumble or throw an interception, just turnovers. I can just see him having one of those games. But um, moving along, San Francisco 4 and Niners play the New York Jets. San Francisco is favored by seven points after they just lost to the Arizona Cardinals. I don't know how they pulled that off. That definitely cost me in some pick em games um, and other locations. But 42 and a half points is over under San Francisco. I had them to win along with everybody else. I have the score 23 to 10. I think that they come out and they just bludgeon these guys to make up for the loss of last week. LA Rams. I underestimated them. They found a way to win against Dallas last week. They're playing against Philadelphia, who just completely laid an egg against the Washington football team. LA Rams are favored by one and a half on the road. 46 and a half points is the over under. I have Philly winning this game 27 to 26 as they wake up after they completely fell asleep at the wheel last week. Next up, Denver. Against the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're on the road. Pittsburgh is the favorite by seven with the over-under 41 and a half. I think Pittsburgh, along with everybody else, we all think Pittsburgh wins this game. I got them winning 26 to 20. Denver, what were y'all doing last week at the end of the game? I think, again, we had a sloppy game. We found a way to get away. The word was escape. I think... The coaching staff, the way they managed the clock towards the end was so bad. They cannot do that again against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will make them pay. Moving on, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, Gronk, they look like they were 50-something years old last week playing against the New Orleans Aints. I think Tampa Bay, although they are favored eight and a half points, 47 and a half is the over under. I think that they find a way to win this game with those old people. Bruce Arians, one of my favorite coaches, wins this game. 24 to 23, the Bucks pull it out. Washington 
The football team goes to Arizona. Arizona's favored by six and a half. The over-under is 46 and a half points. I have Arizona along with the rest of the crew. We have Arizona to win 23 to 16. KC against the Chargers. The Chargers looked very sloppy, very sloppy last week. Although they did find a way to beat these Bengals, I think the Bengals should have won. There was a couple miscues towards the end, but the Chargers pulled it out. Kansas City favored by eight and a half points. 47 and a half is the over under. I was told by Jake Witt, one of our guys here that pick games, he said, I don't talk enough about Kansas City Chiefs. I think I talk too much about the Kansas City Chiefs. They're really good. They won the Super Bowl. They have a lot of explosive weapons. They have a good head coach, rookie running back, blah, 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 blah. The defense is still trash. Nonetheless, they win this game 38 to 24 as they let the Chargers, who are not great on offense, put up 24 points. Anyways, Baltimore at Houston. Big game for us. Baltimore's favored by seven points here. 52 and a half point overdog. I am the only one picking Houston. Courtney, this is your team. This is the time that you guys find a way to win a game. Deshaun Watson does something big here, 27 to 24. I don't want Houston to win. I'm just picking them because I think that they will win. That's it. All right. Next up, New England at Seattle. Sunday night football game. Big game. I think Seattle right now finds a way to win this game. The favorite right now by four. I think that they equal that spread 27 to 23. The over under is 44 and a half points. They do cover that. Monday night football game, New Orleans at the Las Vegas Raiders. I think New Orleans Aints here are favored five and a half points, 50 and a half points over under. I have the New Orleans Aints laying an egg here, finding a way. They are missing Michael Thomas. I don't know what other weapons they have. Alvin Kamara did do a lot out of the backfield last week. I, I think that the Las Vegas Rams first home game, finally at home in Las Vegas, they find a way. They win this game 26-24 and another good game after they just beat Carolina on the road. I am the only one picking Las Vegas again. Aints, they did well last week. I just don't think that they find a way on the road. Historically speaking, they don't play too well on the road anyways. Just look out. Look out for those Vegas Raiders. Just look out. Now, for the final game, now the week, we play at 1 o'clock, but for the final game that we'll be picking today, Jacksonville Jaguars travel to Nashville to play our Tennessee Titans. Titans are favored by 8 points. The over-under is 41 and a half. We'll talk about my game here in a second. Look at these guys, what they have. Are you done? Cool. Now I'll show you the real score. Looking here, my pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars game Tennessee Titans win this game 31 to 16. They even break it down. I think the first quarter is when we start to run away with this. We start off fast in the pass game, and then we start to slow down maybe in the second quarter. But by the third quarter and the fourth quarter, we put our foot on their neck and finish these Jaguars. I have them scoring a touchdown. I think that's going to be maybe a gimme touchdown right before half. But outside of that, the defense shuts down this very, very weak Jaguars offense. Okay, now, so with all the NFL game predictions are out the way, I've given you the preview. I've recapped from the Broncos game. Injuries, transactions even. What else is there to do? Oh, yeah, our favorite time. How about CD's bold prediction? Bold prediction for week two is coming at you. But before I do that, I'll show you week one's bold prediction. Christian Fulton. Christian Fulton has an interception, his first career interception this year, and wins the Rookie of the Week. You heard it here first. Okay, okay, okay. Last week, it was the first week I was just trying to get my feet wet. I got it now. Fulton, even though he had a great game for his rookie debut, he didn't get the interception that I thought that he would get. But this week, I have the right answer. Week two's bold prediction is Derrick Henry. Number 22, Derrick Henry scores three touchdowns against the Jacksonville Jaguars. This one, I don't even know how much of a bold prediction it is. It seems like every time he plays the Jags, he scores. He runs all over them. He does so much. They cannot stop them. But this is how he will do it. He'll have two rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdowns, but he will definitely score three touchdowns. You can write that down anywhere. Trust me, it's good. So with week two's bold prediction, that brings episode 10 to 
and end. I appreciate you guys. Thanks again for stopping by. I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow before kickoff as I bring you guys the inactives and also CDs, keys to victory. But if you like this episode, I ask you to do me one favor, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and even hit that notifications bell so you can get the notification whenever I post tomorrow's episode. I appreciate you guys again, and I will see you soon. But before you leave, I have one question for you. Why tighten up tomorrow when you can tighten up today?